Open your mind. Push reset and reboot your computer. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, just let me introduce um, the person I'm speaking to today. Uh, she is the writer, actress, producer of everything for the short film, uh, Lillian. And uh, I will welcome Amanda Pennington. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for that amazing introduction. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, fine, fine, great. You, you said, said the, the film, film was inspired, inspired by Edna um, Mele's poem, poem, What Lips Are My Lips Have Kissed. Yes. So what was it about the poem that touched you so deeply that you needed to do this film? Um, the poem is... Um, well, the poem has been one of my favorite poems since... The, when I was in acting school and um, my very, very best friend in acting school had used it for an exercise and when we were in the exercise she came and she whispered it in my ear and the first line and that first line is so compelling and I, I just... Um, I love it so I loved it so much and I just was kind of uh inspired. I was inspired by it and I sat down and I wrote this short film about this woman looking back on her life and and just wondering what happened to the the people that she never got to see again, the lovers that she never ever got to see. And we all you know, we all have <laughs> we all have those, <laughs> the ones that get unresolved. Um, but um, but it just it just really struck me as just so you know, just such a powerful poem for me. And it's be it's a beautiful poem. Um, I actually uh, read it. Uh, I went on, which I didn't do the last time, but I I, went mm -hmm. and I read it this time, and it is it is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, with actors like uh, Tony um, Rob Robinson, Nick, that's how you pronounce her name, Robinson. Yes. Right. And Kathleen uh, Chalfant joining the cast. Has it been difficult securing roles for the film, or has it been surprisingly easy? Actually, it's been to to secure actors for the film. Mm -hmm. It's actually been shocking. I'm not. It's actually been very easy. I've I've actually not had a a problem um, finding actors for the film and I'm just I'm so over the moon thrilled that that Kath, that Kathy's gonna play Lillian I just when I got the email that she would do it I just I, it was just she's just such a sweet person and she's such an incredible actress and to have her be a part of this project is just so I'm so grateful for that and I'm thrilled I can't wait to work with her I just I'm just I can't wait you know um, and Tony is such is 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 such a beautiful actress and and all the other actors are equally as stunning uh, Justin Daly is playing William and um, Amy Matroka is uh, playing William's sister-in-law, a uh, sister who's my sister, Lillian's sister-in-law, young Lillian's sister-in-law, and um, and then Andrew Martin is uh, 
<clears throat> is is playing Sal, who is Josie's um, husband. So, and and then little Amelie Sultan is playing uh, Rose, who is my who is Lillian's um, daughter. So, and she's just funny. I've known her for a very long time, and she's she's just a f- cute, sweet, like sassy little girl. Like she <laughs> she's gonna be a great Rose, I think. So. What do you think about yourself? You're playing the lead. And I well, no, I'm well, I'm playing Lillian. I'm playing young Lillian. Yes, I am playing young Lillian. And and I'd also la- like to also say that um, I uh, have secured a co-director so that um, because I feel highly, honestly, to tell you the truth, like written, directed, acted, like I just I can't do possibly do it all at, at, at all. It's a huge undertaking, and it's it's a it's also period. I mean, there's there's the whole other element of making it truthful in the period and the time. And so um, I brought in a, a co-director, um, Patrick Reese, who is amazing. And we've worked together on other projects, so he will be uh, co-directing. And he shares the, he shares, he has the same ideas of how he wants the film to go. So it'll be, it'll be very nice to have, um, to be able to, Kind of sit back when I'm when I'm needing to be an actress and be on set and focus to have it be to have him kind of ca- literally calling the shots, but but um, but to have someone else in charge and not me, so that it um, runs cool. Yeah, well, runs knock wood. You know, hopefully, hopefully that happens. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, and, and, and it's just, it's always nice to have, I mean, of course, one person has to be calling the shots and doing, you know, having the the vision and, and making sure that things are set up the way that you want, you thought that they would be or that you saw them. I mean, you're a writer and, and filmmaker, and but it, it um... But it's also nice, and, and I found, like, in this whole process, that it's really nice to have input, because I can, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I, can, I can really get a lot out of listening to other people's ideas and seeing, wow, well, that's a great idea, you know, and, and maybe we should do it this way, or, oh, you're right, that needs, it needs this, and yeah, I'll write that in or I'll do that, you know, so it's been, it's been very nice, actually. Um, and I can't wait to work with Patrick. He, he and I sat down. I mean, you know, honestly, it's like, you know, when you start at directing, you, you want to be the director and you want to, like, make sure that it's exactly like you wanted it to be. And it's so hard to give, you know, to share that a little bit, right, right? But I'm really, like... If I could share it with anyone, I think I think that you know I'm grateful that Patrick is here because he's very he's actually very calm. He doesn't he doesn't lose you know he, and he's and he's really it is a true collaboration. Okay. Um, so that's been very nice. Um, you basically answered my next question, which was great, um, which was the background of the music characters, but you, you sorry the um, other actors sorry. This right. question is, is, is kind of for the background, for the major characters. I think we have covered this last time, but of course everything was also mundane <laughs> because people don't know. Um, right. Can you give me a background on the major characters in the film? Oh, the major characters, sure. Um, okay, so, so Lillian mm-hmm. is uh, married to William, and... Uh, they are upper class. It uh, takes place. They they're in 1918, or, or, and um, they have a daughter, Rose. Um, Williams, an attorney. Lillian, you know, is a is a wife. <laughs> she's she. You know, Lillian loves art and music, and she's very intrigued by by you know 
by that whole world because she's living as a female in 1918 and it has a daughter and lives in a brownstone and so um, and uh, Francis is an artist from Paris who has been commissioned um, by uh, a wealthy family to come in to paint I mean this is a lot of backstory but um, but she's, but yes, but she's she's come in to paint, and and she has there's going to be there's an exhibit, and she's been brought over from Paris, and um, Francis is African American, and uh, um, so that's even more compelling. But um, so Lillian meets Francis, and they fall in love. Um, and Josie is William, the lawyer, Lillian's husband's sister, who is very much of the class, of the upper class. She's a very upper crust. She's also kind of, um, she really wants to do everything to make sure her family name is preserved. Like she doesn't want to mar the family name or the image or whatever. So, um, and then... Uh, Sal is her husband, and um, and they're very much you know into all of that society, and um, something happens, and we have to go see the film. She, she, yeah, you have to see the film to do to to find that out. But yes, um, yeah. So and then Rose is is our daughter, and she's just sassy and kind of not your typical. Yeah, yeah. She she kind of has a little a little bit of a, a as much of a mouth on her as you can for being in 1918. <laughs> but I I really wanted to write her a fun little part because I love I love Amelie and and she just she comes up her on her own with these the funniest lines you've ever heard in your life and so um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect because she will be great, she'll be a young lady when the British um, is basically taking things, and so the other person, Pop, who's happy as a kid, will be, you know, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I can almost see her being one of those women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, so have you always been interested in writing, directing, producing, and do you have a preference? Which one of those, you know, or acting? Um, well, I've always, I mean, I used to lock myself in my room and sing, <laughs> you know, Oklahoma. I'd put my record on and I'd sing, like, uh, Oklahoma soundtrack and like I'd, I'd dance around and I'd sing you know I'd, I'd like play all day I mean I, I love acting and I really feel like um, like acting is is something that is very close to me and, I, and I've always done it I've always played make-believe or whatever but um but now I feel like writing and Directing is really, is actually a lot of fun, too, because you get to, uh, I love helping people, and so to help another actor kind of find what they need to find, or um, if I have information about that character that I can share with the actor to help them get a little deeper or have a little more color, then uh, I love doing that. And, and the writing part, you know, I mean, the writing part's like, the writing part is fun. It's like, yes, it when we were kids, it's like when we were kids, we were playing in our room. It's like, okay, today we're going to, like, okay, you do this, and then, okay, you want me to do that? Okay, I'll do that. And so it's like, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like that, but just on a, do you have, like, final draft, and you have, like you know. Guy. But it's like, well, what do you want to create? And it, it's so it's just so much fun and what inspires you and what story do you want to tell and um, 
you know, it just really, it's, it's something that I love. Um, I, I really do like writing. Producing is a whole other side of, of the creative process that, you know, we end up doing. It's not, producing, I, I produce, I, I can produce, I'm, I, I believe a, a decent producer, but I feel like producing is something that I would like to eventually have other just be like, okay, you guys can do it, and, and I'll just do the creative stuff. But, you know, I mean, you have to also produce your own work. At, at independent filmmakers are, are wear a lot of different hats, I think. And um, I've also found out that I really, I just, I like, a lot of it. I think, you know, you have to kind of, in the end, focus on one or two that you really enjoy. Otherwise, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. No, this is about the music because, again, I'll be killing everyone on this. But it's a little different this time. Um, what theme of music are you going to go for? Um, is it going to be old or more modern, um, lyrical <laughs> or voice? Well, that's a really good question. I wrote the film to a piece of music that really inspired me, and uh, that it was it was uh, Philip Glass. Um, I think it was Violin Concerto Number no. Two, and that's what I wrote the film to. And but we won't probably use that. I mean, I haven't even gotten to the score yet. We have um, someone in house that is a musician, and she is incredible. Uh, and um, you know, J J Ray Niles, and she. She has expressed an interest in, in doing the score, so I'd like to, you know, when we get to that, collaborate with her and see um, see how it goes. I, I'm not at that point yet. Like, I have, I need to make the film and kind of see how it feels. And But the, but the, the, um, the feel of it will be that kind of uh, Philip Glass... There might be some vocal. Um, and then the other thing that I also like is kind of what, um, kind of using a little more modern music and putting it in with the period. And that's kind of, that's also a, an interesting contrast. But I, again, I have, I don't really know is until I get the film done and we edit and it's done or at least close to being finished, I don't think that I will even be able to. No, no. Yeah. yeah, I just don't know. I don't know yet. I mean, I whatever the film needs me to, to have it be is what it's going to be. It'll tell me, I think, in the end. Does that sound nice? <laughs> I think it does. I think the film, like, the film really tells you kind of, like, what it needs. If it needs instrumental or, or um, lyrical or modern music or whatever it's gonna it's gonna show that I'm gonna find that out well I'll, I'll give you I'll give you, you. I, I think, think I, I, that's, that's why I think, I think every filmmaker of school, school can have said, said that I wrote my uh, I wrote my show um, in a very unusual way because I did write the entire story but I left out the uh, love make the love, love scene and mm -hmm. I purposely left that out because I, I was working very closely with uh, my composer, which I always knew she was going to be my composer. But I had, uh, she one day came on Skype and said, hey, listen to something. I just came up with something. And she sang more than this for me. And I said, I'm going to write, I'm going to write the love scene to that piece only. Right. And the thing about it is that I wrote it with that intention, but when it came, when the film was finished and everything, it couldn't fit. It just wasn't the right time to play. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 was, I, was, I was like, oh my god, because I actually wrote it for that. So, mm -hmm. um, 
it's amazing how things work out because even if you start on the other side of the spectrum, it still turns out what the film needs. Yeah, it's exactly, it's all about the, it's like not even about you anymore or about me or the crew or any, I mean, yes, we have the vision, but it takes, the film actually started very small. It was a very small, and my, my produ- one of my producers is like, I, how many times have I heard that, you know, I thought I was just going to do this one little thing, and then it's turned into this, like, huge thing that's, like, great. It's wonderful. I mean, I've written, uh, you know, I wrote a roll-in for, An- for Andrew Martin, and I, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of turned into a, a bigger thing than I, than I originally thought, and that... Um, is great because it's it's. I've been able to listen to people who are around me who are like, well, maybe we should do this, and and actually it does tell the story in a better way, and it actually honors the poem in a better way, and it it's not, and it does. It's like it takes on a whole life of its own, a film, you know, yeah. and it and it and it um, it starts to. It's really it's really cool how that happens. I mean, it's my first experience with with it. I mean, I've been I've been a producer on, you know, a film that had a huge life that was amazing and I've I've worked on other films as an actress, but I've not ever like this is my first like baby. This is the first one that I've written and you know, it's my vision and so it's very exciting. Um, okay. This one is is quite with all the money. Because it appears you have um, a number of fair men or men that working on them. Working on, uh, does it, I, you know, I love involving the community. I, I, um, I really do. I, I think it's important. You know, I also feel like people are people. And I personally, I, I, I mean, queer, gay, straight, bi, trans, you know, transgender, um, I feel like we're all just people, and I feel like we all just want to work on projects together, and we just want to, like, in my opinion, and in my experience, I like to see it as Yes, I do. I, it is important for me to have. Um, actually, you know what? It's it's really just more important for me to have great people around me and working on set. And if they happen to be queer or straight, it doesn't. It's you know. That's more important. The the quality of the people, the people that are around that are on the set, that are acting in the set, or acting in the film, that are supporting the film. It just matters most to me that they're good people. You know? Yeah. And I've, and I have found some amazing, like, good doesn't even, like, that's, that's almost, they're amazing. They're like, the, the, I have such incredible people surrounding this project that it humbles me the way that they the two producers you know Jerry Niles and Kimberly Skirm and just the they are so they're so passionate about making sure that it gets taken it gets done and that it gets taken care of and um, the crew and you know Anna Stipko and uh she's just a beautiful DP and I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled to have such incredible people um, surrounding it. So, um, Well, from the synopsis, um, I find that there's a, a definite underlying uh, emphasis on the struggles um, of the day with the women. Um, and it seems to be a factor in the film. Uh, does it play a significant backdrop to 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 the film, or is that just the feeling you get from the post synopsis? You know, the, 
the feel the pre the does the present day yeah the does the struggle, struggle of, of, of the, the women's movement. of the women inform yeah. the film mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely I mean you know um, women's suffrage had just passed right in May of 1918 and it does it informs of course it informs the um, the characters and the women in the film uh, it's it's part of their world it's it's part of their um, you know what they're going through it's like I mean that that was a huge huge thing to have passed and um, I mean you know I, I definitely know that working on my character I'm I'm putting it in there you know, it, it depends on each actress. It's like, well, each each actress or actor is going to take the time and they're going to make it their own according to how they see the world, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I was wondering on the um, presence, you know, on the premise of, of the Lillian's revolt. Do you consider making this into a feature? And do you plan on making one? If it's not Lillian, do you plan on making a feature soon? Or would you like to make a feature one day? Um, yeah, I would love to make a feature. <laughs> um, I would love to make a feature, of course. I, I don't know if Lillian will be a feature. Um, I, I made... I, I decided on a short uh, because of um, well because I wanted it to surround the poem and I just wanted to keep it very simple um, it's also very expensive to do period a period piece in fact I was talking to a friend of mine and she was like nobody does period films because they're so expensive and people are afraid of people are so afraid of period work and actually it's it's um it's I'm most familiar with period stuff I I, I did some you know my training is in period a lot of period work but um but yes I I think that um if somebody offered you know offered to say yes, I would love to fund the film and pay for it to be made into a big budget like feature film or a medium sized budget feature film and yes, I would love to pick it up and it's a it's a great it's really a beautiful story and let's develop it of course, absolutely I would love to do that um, uh, and yes, I definitely would love to make a feature. Um, in the future, <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I didn't realize how that was going to sound until I actually said it. So now I was actually in the process of saying it, and then I was like, "Oh, that sounds really cheesy." <laughs> um, what do you think, think about it? Is that the only have been, been, been really the only master of, of period, um, lesbian period films, uh, has been done with the BBC. And that's with Sarah Waters, and I mean she's done three now. Uh, no, four, four period films. Mm. You can see, I mean there's Fingers Smith, there's the one that she just did, uh, The Night Watch, which was her most recent in terms of it was it didn't happen in World War Two. So mm -hmm. I mean all before it was in the 1800s. Um, but she has had success when it comes to making period films, but then she had the backing of BBC. And mm -hmm. then, of course, um, uh, this, this, this Jake, who did, um, who's second film, The World Unseen, was always also a period film, but other than that, I, I really don't think anyone has taken a chance of doing And she did her own stuff, so I think uh, she didn't have anyone backing up. Oh, that's such a beautiful! I'm. I love South African films. South Africa is so beautiful. What I said was that um, 
she, you know, but of course, uh, she was, she's an Indian director who, mm-hmm. from the UK, who mm-hmm. went back to her parents' roots from South Africa to mm-hmm. make an English film. <laughs> so, but it, 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 yeah, I mean, I, she's the only one, and I think her next film, if all reports are, that it will be along the same lines in terms of another period piece. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I have a lot, I've, I've been told a lot of people who wanted to make certain things, uh, period films, uh, blanched at the idea because the fact that they were studying how much money would cost, and you know, but it's definitely an aud- uh, audience. I mean, that mm-hmm. is certain. Uh, can you share like? Uh, a secret or an oh a secret yeah. okay yes um hmm well I'm trying to think of a good secret <sighs> a secret a secret about the film it doesn't have to be about just the film. Oh. Um, secret, I don't know. I don't, God, that's such a good question because it's so, I mean, <laughs> um, well, I can tell you this, and maybe this will spark your interest. Delia Munoz is, is designing right now a, um, a very special comb for the film and it uh, it's going to be used in the film at a certain point so that's all I'll say about that I'm really really grateful that she's doing it and it's I'm it's gonna be stunning it's part of the secret how's that is that a good secret that is a extremely good secret <laughs> I can just see. that's really good <laughs> um, a lot of the girls pulling their hair out and going, we should also make that into a competition for people to guess what it is. <laughs> I know. Oh, we should, shouldn't we? That would be really good. That would be great. In terms of the, the, the whole production, um, where are, where is it right now? Um, and what's the next step? Um, we are... We are actually now in pre-production. We're fundraising. Mm-hmm. We're we're working on getting the film funded, um, and uh, our next step is to start start shooting. We have a, a end of August projected start date. I mean, we we would really love to begin at the end of our August, and. Um, and then we'll just take it from there. Um, we will hopefully, you know, be finished in time to submit to festivals for Sundance. I'd like to submit it to some other festivals and just see how it does out in the world, you know. Um, but, the, but the first thing, first things first, really, is just to get the funding in place um, so that we can we can fully start. Uh, you know, so we have everything that we need. Um, well, in terms of funding, um, can you direct people to where you all are at and with whom? We are actually, um, people can go to kickstarter.com. So it's www.kickstarter.com and, um, and donate there. Um, yeah, that's probably the easiest. We do have a fiscal sponsor through a New York woman in film and television. And so if they wanted to donate now, they could uh, get a tax deduction through the fiscal sponsor. So that's also very good too. Um, And that's New York woman in film and television. And um, they basically just send their check in um, and write the film's name in the memo pad and and they will process the check and and send us the money um for the film so those are two places kickstarter you know is 
is a great place. People can go donate. It, you can put it on your credit card. It's we have categories from five dollars to ten thousand dollars. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we I, I admit, we basically there are a lot of little categories. There are rewards, so um, either place is good. I per, I like Kickstarter personally when I donate to friends' films because it's easy. You just put it, your information in, you're done in five seconds, and you it doesn't charge your card for a month. So even if you don't, you know, if you're if you know you're going to have it in a month, you can still go and donate. And any amount is good. A dollar, two dollars. Hell no, we leave anything but a hundred or more. Okay, a hundred, two fifty, you know. <laughs> and um, well, I saw what you what you wrote for the ten thousand. That was very cute. Um, yeah. <laughs> for the ten, so I'm, I'm making sure I'm telling people. I will put the links and everything down below. Um, have you all um, started a website for the for the film? Um, we, we have a we have a website that's um, in progress. So, uh, and we're currently working on that right now. So it's it's about to be up and running uh, shortly. All right. Uh, but of course, um... If you if you uh, the link to it is on my. Um, I got the link. Yeah, it's on the face. It's on Facebook, and uh, that's the. But it's still kind of a work in progress. That that website. Um, yeah, we. I have just. Well, I haven't exactly start. Yeah, start started the blog, but I haven't designed the page fully finished. Um, mm -hmm. about uh, my new directory. I think I told you about before that mm -hmm. um, I'm having. Uh, where we list all the films, filmmakers, actresses, writers, directors, everybody that you know has had any kind of connection to uh, PNT TV in its uh, two years that it's been around, and basically um, you know make it a, a stop one stop shop for fans, and also could be um, a good way to network for the for the for um, the filmmakers, you never know. Oh, that would um, be great. I ran it through three quarters of women that I interviewed and who have promoted their films and they're pretty, actually, it surprised me how very enthusiastic they all were and willing to send me stuff. Um, so I was thinking of putting, because what we also do, especially if we were promoting one particular, one of the films, um, to, to push, push the film, film as well, but not only the film, but if they had their own production, and mm -hmm. if it wasn't any production and just uh, a one-off, promote themselves. So, mm -hmm. will you all be willing to go on um, to go on the blog? Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Great, great. All right. The last two questions that I had forgotten, I got, but um, mm -hmm. I got it back. Is one of the most past questions they gave me. Which is, is playing a lesbian role any different to playing a heterosexual role? And do you prefer playing any? Um, that's a really good question. I, I feel like, uh, it's really, I mean, obviously it's different. I mean, it's different for obvious reasons, right? Of but, course. um, I, I just like a good story. To tell you the truth, um, Playing a lesbian role is really, it's, uh, I just, I feel like, you know, it's all about the story and it's all about the connection you feel with the other actor. And to be honest, at the end of the day, that's what it is anyway. It's all about the connection you feel with that person. Um, and I really, I really feel like, um, you know, obviously, for obvious reasons, yes, it is different. I've played both. I've played uh, straight. I've played gay. I mean, I've played, you know, um, and I feel like, you know, and, and the through line to those all those women were just really that they're just people and they're just going through an experience and it doesn't matter, 
you know, obviously, if they're gay or straight, it's going to inform the choices they make, but um, I, I really just feel like it's all about people, and it's all about connecting with the other actor, and who, you know, and it's, it's really all about the connection, and... Um, yeah, I don't I don't know. For me, I don't know if it's any different. I think that for me it's just it's all about that connection and just getting in there and connecting with that person that's right in front of you that you're doing the scene with and and doing your homework and really knowing how you feel about certain things. You know. Is this your first romantic uh, game? I mean, it's not. I I did a, a piece, Great Nebula and Orion, Lamford Wilson piece. That um, it's a play. It's a one act. It's a very beautiful play. I actually thought about making that into a short, but it just didn't happen. Um, I think I worked on it for so long that I was just we were just needed to put it to bed. No pun intended. But um, <laughs> no, again. did I really just say that? I did just say that. Oh Lord, have mercy. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, we just really, it just, it was a, it's a beautiful piece. It's about a woman in the sixties who is gay, who is a, a very successful designer and her, she and her best friend run into each other at Bergdorf's and her best friend's this really conservative person from Connecticut. And it's just that it's the, the one act is very long. I, you know, um, it's extremely long and dense and there's a lot of um i mean it's just it's very dense it's like beef stew dense but um um the the play is is basically you know i uh, the the woman um has not come out to her best friend and so it's all about her coming out and then there's a secret there's like you know anyway but no but to make to a very long question, an answer to your very short <laughs> question is, um, this is, uh, I guess, then my second time playing a lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, since we last spoke, uh, my darling Jess um, prompted me and said that necessarily know the answer to that. I mean, I do out actresses have a, a harder time than actresses who are very private. I don't I don't know because I, I mean in my I, I don't know. I, I feel like um, actresses just have sometimes just a hard time anyway. <laughs> Um, I feel like, you know, whatever community you surround yourself in, as long as it's supportive, you're not going to have a hard time. And I feel like, um, you know, sometimes there's even animosity in the gay community, even maybe more than in the straight community. And, uh, I mean... I don't know. I think it's just being yourself. Like, I, I think it... I don't... You know... I feel like um, I feel like all you ha like for actresses. For me, it's just important to just be myself, and to be honest and truthful and surround. Like I've really just tried to be vigilant on surrounding myself with people who are honest and truthful and care about me and care about making good art and not getting into um, any. Drama. Um, I do feel like I don't know if you're. I feel like it's really um, to me. I just feel like I'm a woman, and that's. Do you know what I mean? Like that's just all anyone needs to really know. Anyway, it's just that I'm I'm female, and I'm in this business, and I want to make a good movie. And. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so what's so. next? What's, what's, after after Lillian? Lillian? what's, what's next? next? What's, what's next, next for you? you? Um, there are a couple of projects that are in development. I am, uh, there's a feature that is really compelling that I, you know, have been asked to work on. Um, there is, I think I'm going to take a break for a, a weekend. I'm actually, um, uh, yeah, I'm going to maybe go to see my family. My sister's having a baby, so... That's really exciting. So I'm going to go see my niece. Um, but after Lillian, yeah, I, I mean, I definitely feel like this is not my last film. I really do want to make another one. Um, right now, everything that I'm doing, t like, pretty much is it, Lillian. So I really haven't had much time to even, or brain capacity to even think about what I want to do next, you know, I just like how it feels it's, like when we have films that are almost like if they're succubus. Yeah, it's just this other, it's become this other thing that it just Time is. Star hips. Yeah, it's my life. Like I wake up and I, I get, you know, I started having someone do my schedule because it was getting to be, I just was like, I can't, it's, it's too much. I, I don't even know. I'm starting to miss appointments, and I, I don't even know where I'm supposed to be. So now that that started to happen, it's been a lot, lot better. Like, I've actually had some time to sit and do m some of the creative stuff that I need to be doing at this point, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I definitely would love to do another film. Um, I I can't wait to work on this this feature with, um, with the, a friend of mine. And... Um, there was a there there may be a little play um here in New York. I don't know. If someone wants to pay me money to be in their film, I would love that too. That would be really make me happy. Well, I'll, you'll be on the block. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, um so, any yeah. last words as we're, we're closing off here? Any what? Any last words as we're closing off here? Just you know, Listen, I, I like, I had a really rough year, you know, I, I kind of lost my job in my home and I didn't have a place to live and my cat was staying with someone else, a friend of mine, and it was really, really, really rough, really, really, really rough and people kept telling me to keep going. They were just like, keep going keep going keep going don't give up you know my mom was like don't give up think of all that work you know that would be put to put to waste <laughs> and and I you know I really feel like it's really tough times right now for a lot of people mm -hmm. and I just I really just want to say that if you know you have a dream or if you have a vision or if you have an idea don't wait for somebody to tell you that it's okay to do it. Like, just do it. Just do it. Just do it, and it will happen if it's supposed to happen. And if it's not, maybe it'll happen later, or it'll happen in a different way. But just keep following your dream, because that's, like, at the end of the day, all you really have. I mean, that's all you really have are your dreams and what inspires you. So just that's... And I'm... I don't know. I'm just really grateful for the people in my life who don't let me stop, you know, um, doing that. So, Pretty yeah. Pretty good advice. Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean it. <laughs> well, Amanda, thank you so much again for giving, uh, giving us this opportunity. You have been quite a lot of fun. Um, and somehow I've always managed, I don't know how I do it, I hope I continue to always do it, but I always pick the winners and good people, mm. who, um, including our PNT family. So um, it has been quite, uh, it, it's been quite pleasant. Oh, thanks. Well, it's been very nice, and I'm so glad that we finally got to do this. Indeed. You know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um... Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>
Hi girls, um, I hope you enjoyed the interview with Amanda Pennington uh, for our Sinful Airs blog, for my Sinful Airs blog. Um, I want you to uh, support the film Lillian, which is, which is about to start filming, at their Kickstarter account, which I will have the link below this video on YouTube and of course on the page at our Sinful Airs blog. I just wanted to take this time to thank everybody for the support you've been showing for my short film Angel's Ashes. It's fast approaching 4,000 views. So thank you, thank you for that. Keep watching. And also, uh, there are major happenings. We've PNT TV celebrated its first year anniversary uh, just a month ago. Also, if you are a subscriber, if you follow my channel on YouTube, you would have noticed that I don't know if you would have noticed, but I'm telling you anyway, that I'm fast approaching a thousand subscribers, so which is unbelievable to me, and I thank all of you. Keep it coming. And uh, that's basically it. I just wanted to thank all the members of P2, PNT TV, uh, for keeping, you know, keep giving us, keep giving us that support. All of you made some major changes to the format um, of PNT. Uh, especially with the original programming, having the separate blogs. Uh, all of them are still very, very much a part of PNT TV. Uh, we've added the sports. We unfortunately lost um, Angie, uh, who did uh, literature. We're looking for somebody else. If any one of you are interested, you know how to contact me. You can um, send me an email at pnttv uh, underscore web at yahoo.com. I'll leave the link also on Sinfulez. You can um, write to the contact page in any one of our blogs, uh, so or Facebook, anything like that. Uh, if you're interested in doing uh, anything to do with books, but we'll talk more about that. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you all, thank you, thank you, thank you for the support you've always shown BNT TV, and. Uh, I hope there's a lot, uh, but I know there's a lot more in store for you. So stick around and see. Okay? Bye-bye. Love you all. Crazy, it's driving me insane, can't get my mind off it, baby, that thing's over my brain, I'm having dreams of you, in compromising positions, I could feel my nerves just twitching.